world began as a watery chaos, which was called none. And it was from this chaos that the sun god Ray emerged onto a mound. And the great mound from which Ray created the universe and all its living things became a shape of great creative power, sacred to all the world. But unlike other mountains upon this earth, the only being who can ascend to its pinnacle is the god himself, the living son of Ray, king of Upper and Lower Egypt. Everything and everyone in the universe has a place. It was my grandfather Sneferu's place to be king. Now he has become Osiris, ruler of the underworld. And so it is my father Khufu's place to be king. As it will someday be my older brother Kawabs. That is all part of the balance of Mat, and it is most important that Mat be maintained in these troubled and difficult times after the death of a great king. All of this has been taught to me from a very young age by the royal vizier, Ankaf, who knew that it was my place to be a scribe, a man of learning. Hodedeth, you will be our eyes and ears throughout the kingdom. Thank you, sire. And you will help keep my name alive when I leave this earth to become Osiris. Not for many, many years, I hope, father. Whenever it happens, we must be prepared for it. Yes. We certainly must. Uh, which leads me to the subject of your own eternal home, a great lord of the two lands. My pyramid must be every bit as grand as my father's. Indeed. But without the compromises forced upon the builder. As you recall, Angav, when my father's first pyramid was half completed, cracks and faults began to form, and there was clearly instability within the structure. Yes, I recall it well. Uh, so at that point, uh, the architect decreased the angle of ascent to 43 degrees. Leaving a structure which appears to hesitate on its rise toward the sun. My father is not a man for hesitation. Uh, but as your majesty sees, in your father's second pyramid, uh, the one to the north, uh, the same slope is maintained throughout the height, rendering a perfect structure. Not quite. You will build me a pyramid as daring as his first began yet as massive as a second. In short, the greatest pyramid of all, so that no one who sees it can doubt the power and the glory of the king of Egypt. From now until the end of time. And you will build it not in the shadow of my father's pyramid at Dashur, but across the great virgin expanse at Giza. your necropolis on the west bank of the Nile, where the sunbird of your father is seen to set, where the passage to the next world begins. Now, the site your majesty so wisely chose allows us to build on a suitably splendid scale. Adjoining your great pyramid, we will place three smaller pyramids for your three gracious queens, as well as many tombs for the beloved members of your court. While my father found favor with the plan, my mother had certain objections. Since I am the main queen, it would seem only fitting that my pyramid be larger than the other two. Uh, well, uh, you see, my queen, it was my father's third queen, Pinutsu, who provided the logical explanation. My dear, think of what you're saying. If your pyramid were to be built larger than those of the other queens, it would detract from the main pyramid of our lord and divine king. <laughs> Quite so, uh, noble queen. As you see, my lord, uh, the plan will afford a suitable location at the proper time for the pyramid of your successor. My brave son, Kawab. Your remaining children will continue surrounding you and serving you for all eternity in suitably impressive tombs. My learned son, Hordedef, the scribe, will record your progress for me. One further advantage of the Giza site, it is located just across the Nile from Tura the finest limestone quarries in all your realm.
flood stage, it will be a relatively simple process to ferry the blocks across from the tour. And we will have our main quarry close by to provide the thousands of blocks we will need for the inner core. And the site itself is now being cleared and leveled. And so that the pyramid may serve our king as his pathway to the imperishable stars, it must be laid out in precise relation to the four corners of the earth. Once completed, we will be ready to begin. Now we are ready to begin. This way. It's all here, just as we suspected. Quickly now, gather everything together. It won't hold the door for us all night. As always, your help is appreciated. The plan you drew was completely accurate. It should be. I helped supervise the construction of this tomb myself. And as always, your contribution is well rewarded. Good. Now go. If anyone finds out about this, the king himself will have me torn limb from limb. As you see, Lord Elif, the two rooms are already being chiseled out of the solid rock below ground level. These will serve as the tomb chamber and storage room and will be entered through a gradually descending shaft. Two granite portcullises will be lowered to see the entrance to your tomb chamber after burial. Once the tomb itself is complete, we can begin the first course of stones. At which point, my father's pyramid begins its transformation from dream to reality. You see, Kafra, it is the god Osiris who causes the waters of the Nile to rise every year in their season. As a son of the king, I have many brothers and sisters, but of all of them, the one closest to my heart is my young brother Kafra, who shares my sense of wonder of the world. Please tell me the story of Osiris again. Osiris was king on earth long ago. He married Isis, and their good works were widely known. His brother, Seth, whose rages were like a wounded hip, became jealous and plotted against him. He killed Osiris and rent his body into many pieces. Then he threw them into the river, where the current carried them swiftly away. Oh, the wailing of Isis, who would not forsake her dead husband. But the love of Isis could not be broken. With the help of the jackal-headed Anubis, she found the pieces of Osiris and through her own powerful magic, put him back together. And he reigned over the kingdom of the dead, where he continues to this day. Isis then sent her son Horus the Falcon to avenge the treachery against his father. While he's alive on earth, the king of Egypt is Horus the Vindicated and Unvanquished. And when he leaves this earth, he becomes Osiris, ruler of the kingdom beyond. And each new king becomes Horus and maintains the delicate balance of mind. Mother, will I become Horus one day too? I do not think so, Kafra. Your brother Kawab is first in line to be king, but I am sure your future will also be great. Yes, I think it will be. As the years went by, it was easy to imagine the great things his mother predicted for him. As before my very eyes, Kafra, you have grown tall and strong. Thank you, Father. As you recall, son of Ray, the two rooms have been cut out of the rock 15 feet below ground level and have been covered over by granite slabs. This is only one more consideration which assures that your car will be protected by the greatest structure ever built by man. At this point, we are beginning construction on the Queen's Pyramids, all in a neat, even row. Would that my Queens themselves were so orderly.
so impressed by the last one. It took me weeks to learn it, Mother. And even if I tell another story, or Dead F will only tell a better one. Anyway, Kalab is my father's favorite. He is the one who will someday be the king, not I. Nothing is impossible, my son. I never know what to do. Try to act the part. Even Kafra behaves more regally than you, and he has no chance compared to yours. Great Khufu, master of the two lands. My father's tomb. No! Father's tomb is a matter of grave concern for the well-being of his car and the stability of Mart. But, like a true scholar, Uncuff learned from all he encountered. As a result of the unfortunate occurrence at Dashur, Your Majesty, we are taking several decisive steps. First, we are moving your father's resting place to a site where he will have the best protection. Whatever treasures and possessions were lost can be replaced as long as his body remains intact for his car to recognize. Quite so. And then what of my tomb, Angarth? It will be even more attractive to robbers than my father's. I have studied the problem at great length, my lord, and have come up with the following solution. It was here that Ankaf's brilliance shone forth with a plan so innovative and daring. Uh, virtually every other pyramid follows the basic plan of a passageway from the north leading directly down to the burial chamber cut out of the rock below ground, as we have already constructed here. But in this case, it will foil any tomb robbers, because we will move the location of your father's eternal resting place to the very heart of the pyramid. Huge stones will block and conceal the real entrance, and halfway up the actual passage, Another corridor will divert intruders to this empty room here, leading them to believe that the tomb has already been plundered. Little would they suspect that just above the ceiling here, a grand gallery leads to the true tomb high above. Securing the knowledge that everything was under control, and that every imaginable detail had been attended to, my father and I left them to discuss the construction. The king could now rest easy. Yes, but can we rest easy? Uh, what do you mean? Though the robbers of Sneferu's tomb were captured, and most of his treasure recovered, they had already destroyed his body. Oh, dear. But the king is unaware of this. Oh, dear. If he knew that his father's sacred car was now homeless. <laughs> Say no more. This must remain our secret for eternity. returns from his latest expedition to Nubia, won't it? Yes, let us hope so. Noble Prince, we have seen Nubian warriors in the hills. Ha! Oh, pay them no mind. But Great Prince Kawab, they appear to be heavily armed and prepared to attack. Don't forget that I am the son of the living god, Khufu. Those nomads cannot harm us. Forward, I say. I will pay for this outrage. Those who offend the majesty of Ray, a thousand times over, they will pay. This is the word of Khufu. The 
loss of my cherished brother, Kawab, weighs heavily upon my father. He worries for Mart and the stability of this world, when it will be his time to leave it. At least you may take heart in having other fine sons, who can take up the golden wings of Horus after you. But it was Ankaf who had to tell my father that I, the next in line, had decided I could not be his successor. Trained my entire life as a scholar and a scribe, I knew I could not fulfill the godly role of king. And so my younger brother, Balfra, will now someday take his place. Hodidiv wishes to remain a scholar and scribe, and has told your father he will not be king. This leaves Meretiti's third son, Balfra, to come before you in line. Then what chance can there possibly be for me, mother? What chance was there for Balfra while Kauhub lived? Your thoughts are not grand enough, my son. That is your only problem. It was not long after Kawab's tragic passing that my three brave and royal brothers set out on a leopard hunt. Balfra, I am told, was envious of the noble animal Kafra had slain, but Jadefra generously confided to him where he might find an even greater leopard. Jedefra had to relate the sad events to my father, Khufu. His grief was unbounded. Father? At last, the prize is in sight. You, my son, will be the next king. Rebellion in the south. The plundering of my grandfather's tomb. The loss of Kawab and now Bafra. Mart is surely out of balance and needs to be restored at once. If not, then what? It is even possible my father's pyramid would not be completed within his life on Earth. I have given these matters much thought, my lord. I have heard of a wise old magician, Deddy by name, a man of 110 years, who lives not one day's boat ride from here. It is said of him that he even knows how to reattach a head that has been cut off and has predicted many things in his life. Surely he will know what is to become of your reign and your royal issue. Oh, Nedef, my son, go yourself and bring this daddy here to me. of the day in Deddy's village and accepted the hospitality of his household. For me, it was an experience to be remembered and cherished, as I had never before been afforded the opportunity to observe how common people lived. And the next morning, Deddy appeared before the king, my father, to tell him what his magic had discerned. Would any of Khufu's issue survive to be king? And would his great dynasty continue? Sovereign Khufu, my lord, may you live, prosper, and be in health. Your dynasty will not end yet. I see two of your issue who will assume the mantle of Horus as king of all the land. Thanks be to Ray, my father. One will rule a brief time only. He will be reviled in his own time and defamed when he is gone. The other will be strong and brave. He will rule for many years and Egypt will grow even greater than her him. He will do you honor and guard your sacred house of eternity. And his proud face will be known until the end of time. But I have many children yet. Which are the two of whom you speak? 
There are some things not even a magician may know. And it was not long afterward that the wise old daddy took leave of this earth himself, leaving behind a mystery that only time could now unravel. we had eagerly awaited for so many years. The capstone has arrived, your majesty. A magnificent, smoothly carved block of limestone sheathed in gold. At the top of the final course, we have chiseled a slot into which the capstone will be secured. As the mud brick ramps are removed, a scaffolding is erected so the workers can chisel away the steps of the casing, leaving the entire surface smooth. As they complete their task, others polish it to brilliance. With that, my father's great pyramid was complete. And just in time. The falcon has flown to the sky to become one with the sun god Ray. Like his fathers before him, he has become Osiris. My father was taken to his valley temple for the 70 days of embalming which would prepare him for his life in the hereafter. His internal organs were placed in jars of limestone. His body was prepared with natron then anointed with myrrh, cedar oil, honey, and olive oil. Incense was burned. When the embalming was completed, he was wrapped in strips of fine linen, upon which his own features were painted to assure that his body could be recognized by his car. The burial chamber was furnished with everything my father's car would need to live there for eternity. From the valley temple, my father's body was taken up the sacred causeway to his pyramid temple. And here his mouth was opened by the high priest, allowing him to partake in the offerings that would keep him alive forever. And here he was awakened to his everlasting life as Osiris. As my brother, Jedephra, became the falcon, Horus, king of this life. At this moment, my mind traveled back to the words my father had said for his father, Sneferu, as the dead king was placed in his pyramid. Hail to you, ladder of the god, arise, remove your earth, raise yourself that you may travel in company with spirits, for your wings are those of a falcon. Cross the sky and make your abode among the followers of Osiris, the imperishable stars. And deep within the pyramid, inside a case of granite, my father's body was placed to rest, to watch over us, over all Egypt, his people, safe and protected for all time to come. one day too. I do not think so, Kafa. Your brother Kawab is first in line to be king, but I am sure your future will also be great. Yes, I think it will be. One will rule a brief time only. He will be reviled in his own time and defamed when he is gone. The other will be strong and brave. He will rule for many years, and Egypt will grow even greater than him. He will do you honor and guard your sacred house of eternity. And his proud face will be known until the end of time.